I am so excited. I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk really fast. Well, I'll try to slow down because this, this new electric motor is blowing my mind. We're talking about one of those interesting technological innovations in the EV space that I've seen for a long time because battery chemistry is changing every week. Battery chemistry, I talk about those all the time on the channel. Try to explain them as simply as I can. Energy density of batteries continues to improve. Charging speeds are going through the roof. And um, we don't talk about this, do we? We don't talk about motors all that often. I have made a few videos, I think about 15. But out of 6,000, that's not that many. This new electric motor is truly blowing my mind. I mean, it is absolutely mental. Take a look at this, 30,000 RPM. This thing makes internal combustion look so incredibly trash. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you here. And you know what? It'd be awesome if I could see everyone watching this video because I really want to present this information to you. Speaking of presenting it to you, I'll be at the Sydney EV Show, which is going to be on in November of this year. If you want to come, I'll have a link soon where you can get a discount on your tickets and um, obviously check out some new fantastic EVs. Love to see you at the show. The company that builds Toyota's cars for them in China and owns the Aeon EV brand, which is one of the fastest growing electric car brands in the world, they have just revealed a 30,000 RPM EV motor. Now, because it's so incredibly fast and powerful, it actually improves efficiency and it can add 50 kilometers of range to a car simply by changing to this motor, say GAC. Now, currently, uh, these motors are being used in the so-called HipTech brand. It's actually Aeon's Hyper cars. They have the SSR, the HT, and the GT, basically three expensive electric vehicles. That's where they're gonna use these motors first. Now, obviously, motors like this, they cost a lot of money to develop, but what eventually happens is companies like this will put them in their expensive cars at the start, give it a year or give it a couple of years, they'll put them in their cheaper cars. That's why this intrigues me, get more range. There are so many things being done to electric cars to improve range and efficiency. This is one of them. The Quark Electric Drive 2.0 has a motor power density of 13 kilowatt or nearly 20 horsepower per kilogram. An efficiency of 98.5%. This is the most efficient electric motor in history that's ever gone into an electric car that's ever been created for any kind of commercial purpose. But the power density is staggering, guys. Put this into context. The average motor or engine in a supercar or in you know um, some sort of high-powered vehicle weighs around 300 kilograms, so about 650 pounds, right? That's pretty normal. In fact, some are much heavier than that, but anyhow. The average is about that weight. If this was applied to that vehicle, right? Let's say you were to do a straight conversion, then this equals 3,000 kilowatt, or about about four and a half thousand horsepower for a motor weighing 300 kilograms. If it were to you know extrapolate it to that kind of weight. The energy density of these motors is truly staggering. And honestly, it does make internal combustion. It doesn't matter whether that's a new uh, Lamborghini or a new Ferrari. The, the truth is the energy density in those internal combustion vehicles is staggeringly low in comparison to these electric motors. So how does it do this? Well, what kind of technology is it using? Is it different to a Tesla motor? Yeah, it's actually very different to a Tesla motor. For one, Tesla builds motors for based on price, more than anything else, price and longevity. So how long will they last for? And are they cheap to manufacture? That's Tesla's focus, not on this kind of, um, this kind of innovation. This motor uses a special material, which is called an amorphous soft magnet. Um, it's known as liquid metal because it has a permeability 20 to 100 times that of an ordinary silicon steel sheet. Thickness is only a quarter of that in an A4 sheet of paper. It's incredibly thin. This gives the motor an incredible efficiency and apparently it can work when it's close to room temperature is when it's its most efficient. Overall efficiency of close to room temperature superconductivity plays a vital role in improving the motors, well, the way it works essentially. 
These sort of motors, though, that means they have to be cooled. In practice, the motor can add around 50 kilometers of range to an EV without any other changes. Simply by changing the motor to this motor, they say, GAC, they say it will improve the range in their cars by around 50 kilometers. And that's a big difference. However, in a plug-in hybrid, they say it can improve range by as much as 150 kilometers. Now, I'm not sure why that's why there's more range added to a plug-in hybrid versus an EV, but that's what they say. This is the equivalent of adding a pretty big battery. I mean, it's the equivalent of adding, increasing your battery by 10% just by changing the motor. Not to mention, it's also much more powerful than the average motor. GA says the technology has the potential to save 90 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year. 90 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year. That's mind blowing. I don't know how they came up with that number, but it probably can. Car News China says that earlier this month, the brand or Aeon launched a new generation of smart digital chassis. So the skateboard chassis, they've apparently improved them. It has a minimum turning radius of 3.4 meters, their new vehicles. And that's a 40% reduction in minimum turn radius. I'm not sure exactly how they're doing it, potentially with rear wheel steering, but I don't believe they have Tesla's uh, Cybertruck fully electric steering yet. I believe that still the, the Cybertruck is still the only vehicle in the world to have that. But the chassis does have the in, an industry first fusion electronic differential lock. This means that two wheels can easily um, potentially get out of trouble when suspended, say analyst. But anyway, I, whatever the case, this fusion electronic differential lock does, it gives the vehicle a much smaller turning radius. And this is, these kind of features are pretty cool, right? Because it means that you drive, you could be driving a relatively big vehicle, but it doesn't feel big when you go to turn it. It feels like a, a small vehicle. So when you're in tight areas where you have got to do a tight turn, you don't have to do a five point turn or a three point turn. You can turn in just one single turn. Big difference. Electric car technology is, is quite remarkable because these improvements to motors, to EV motors, they're getting smaller, more efficient, more powerful. They mean that more space is freed up on the inside of the car. So you'll see an internal combustion car, you'll see the interior size, the boot space. And then if you actually made an EV, the same size, overall same size, the overall exterior dimensions were the same, you'll have more space inside that EV. But that will continue. Smaller motors mean more space, right? More efficiency, more power as well, more range because they're lighter. But smaller batteries will come because the higher energy density batteries mean the battery packs will continue to get smaller. By this time, guys, I'll be making a video of the same time, 2030, you know, five and a half years from now. The average battery size then will probably be 20% smaller than the average battery size today because of the energy density improvements in batteries. So all of these new technologies are coming to EVs. When it comes to technology coming to internal combustion engine cars, I can't think of anything coming that's game changing in any way whatsoever. Electric cars have some incredible new features coming over the next few years, and it's gonna be so exciting seeing them, talking about them, discovering them, seeing what effects they'll have to the entire automotive industry.